Hi, I'm Rick Eberst. I'm a docent here at the Mullen Automotive Museum. And thrill of all thrills, we're going to be doing some under the hood uh, looks today. And under the hood, we mean not only looking under the hood at the engine, but maybe inside some of the cars. This is a 1934 Wasson 27C. It has a body by Fagoni, and it was built by Fagoni before Fagoni and Falashi were actually uh, team members and partners. The engine of this car is quite spectacular, and it's also quite rare. This has a night sleeve valve engine in it, but rather than having tappet valves, it has sleeves that turn back and forth that have openings in it that allow the gas and air to get in and the exhaust fumes to get out. So if you zoom in and look at the engine, you can see uh, that it has two Zenith carburetors uh, that are both side draft carburetors. And it has what's called a long stroke engine in it. And the stroke of this engine is almost four inches. So it has a much longer stroke than a lot of other sleeve valve engines in it. The interesting thing about uh, sleeve valve engines that makes it kind of important is that they're very, very quiet. And uh, Wasson built airplanes before he started building cars, and he used a lot of engines that were very noisy. So in his cars, he wanted two things, and he wanted them to be quiet, and he wanted to have them a lot of light inside, so they weren't like uh, tombs on the inside. The disadvantage of the sleeve valve engine is they use almost as much oil as they use gasoline. So when you see a sleeve valve engine driving down the road, you'll probably see a little blue smoke coming out of the back. So in addition to watching your gas, you also have to watch your oil. Uh, the other issue is these cars tended to file the spark plugs a lot. So you'll see a lot of cars of this finish that have extra spark plugs on the inside. So if you're driving down the road, one of the things you needed to know how to do is change the spark plug because you could tell that one engine cylinder was not functioning properly. Uh, back in the back, you might notice some, if you were to see the dash back here, if you can come around and maybe get a picture of the dash. These dashes on Wasans are amazingly complex. They have more dials and whistles than you could think of and they're all set up like airplanes. On the left-hand side of the dash, there's uh, two round units that are black that have smaller little rounder units in it. That's where your fuse panels are. So if you're flying your airplane and a fuse goes bad, you can't pull over the side of the road to change your fuse. So they would have the fuse boxes inside the uh, dashboard so you could easily change them if you needed to. So the same thing is true here on these cars, uh, on Wasans at least. Now, up in the front, you might see a large black and chrome unit that's down below the radiator. That's called the Dynastart. Now, when you start with Sun, it's like starting an airplane. There's usually 25 or 26 things you gotta do in the proper sequence to get them started. One of the things you have to do is after you get the engine started, you have to throw a switch that turns that starter into the generator. Wasson said, well, the starter turns this way to generate power to turn the engine, and it turns this way to generate electricity. Why do I need two different units? So he has these units, which are quite heavy. They weigh about 80 pounds, but they uh, are both a, a starter and a generator. So I hope that you'll be able to come to the museum sometime soon and see it in person. If you're lucky, we might have one of the other events we call Under the Hood, where we have them open, where you can actually come and see them in person. These engines are just as spectacular on the inside and the outside as they are as the bodies that they, they grace.